Renee, just to let you know, his screen says Francis Hall School. He'll have the uh, school district icon, just so you're aware of what okay. screen he's on. Perfect, and I see Patrick joining now. All right, excellent. So with it being 633, uh, I would like to call to order our first Zoom board meeting. Um, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I think on the recording, they got me. Thanks for joining me all on mute. <laughs> all right, uh, board, I will entertain a motion to approve the agenda for April 16th, 2020 as presented. Ms. Stiglitz, you have to unmute. Aye. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Stiglitz. Mr. Lane. Second. Motion made by Mrs. Stiglitz, seconded by Mr. Lane. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 7-0. So due to uh, our virtual board meeting, uh, patron comments were submitted uh, via online today, and I will read those aloud. Um, we have two submissions, so bear with me, and I'll read them to everyone. So the first is from Mindy Darrow. Um, she is a resident. And uh, she says, I have a kindergartner and was wondering if it's possible to have the district agenda released on Friday instead of Monday. I prepare for the school week on the weekends. Currently, we are always one week behind. It's not a big deal. I'm just curious if it's an, if it's an option. Also, are there discussions going on about possibly not returning next school year? If the schools open, but parents choose not to send their child to school, will we have to register as a homeschooler or will there be an option? Uh, the second comment that we have this evening is from Melinda Campbell, uh, also a resident. And it says, end of school date. No need to make up six snow days when kids are not taking finals and quite honestly, each teacher handling classes differently. Mine hasn't had one meeting with a single teacher. And four day week was in place already since Wednesday was teacher slash office day. Um, so as a reminder, we do not uh, comment uh, on the patron comments during our meetings, um, but they will be answered by the appropriate district staff member. All right. Next on our agenda, board, I will entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. So moved. Motion made by Mr. Lane. Second. Second by Mrs. Walker. Board, any questions, concerns, comments? All of those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 7-0. Board, I entertain a motion to approve the rehiring of certified personnel staff effective July 1st as presented. So moved. Second. Motion made by Mrs. Stiglitz, seconded by Mrs. Walker. For any, uh, Mrs. Simpkins? Nothing to add. This is just our standard uh, rehiring of certified staff before we issue contracts. Thank you. Board, any questions, comments, concerns? All of those in favor? 
Aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstain. Motion carries, six, one, abstain. Mr. Hain, did you wanna mention why you abstain? There's a family member on there. Thank you. Board, I'll entertain a motion to approve the amended support staff salary schedule for 2020-2021 school year as presented. So moved. Second. Motion made by Mrs. Walker, seconded by Mrs. Lang. Ms. Simpkins? Uh, the board will remember that we, uh, in our staffing plan, we moved the fueler responsibilities away from the bus driver position. So these will be standalone positions as part of our staffing plan next year. And we just needed to place them on the support staff salary schedule. Um, we, uh, this salary range that we are recommending is in line with all of our benchmark districts and how they compensate their fuelers. And of course, we'll follow our policy when placing employees within the range. Um, currently, we have bus drivers that are extending their day to complete these duties and are receiving their regular hourly wage. And now these positions will be separate and on our support staff salary schedule. Board, any questions, comments, concerns? All right, by roll call. Ms. Stiglitz had a question, Ms. Cope. Oh, I'm sorry, thank you. I'm, I'm struggling with um, the agenda being on the full screen, seeing all the, the members here. Mrs. Stiglitz, please. That's okay. I just was curious about the support staff salary schedule. I, um, is that for all of the support staff? Because I didn't see the nurses listed on there. Nurses are part of our FISPA bargaining group, so they have a separate salary schedule. This is the just the support staff, which are folks that are not represented by an organization. Okay, that's all I needed to know. Thank you very much. All right, board, any other questions? All right, um, Laura, I am gonna ask for your assistance in this current view. I can't see everyone, so help me keep an eye out, please. Will do, I can see everyone. Thank you so much. All right, uh, all of those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. All right, board, I'll entertain a motion to approve the additional st support staff FTE for the 2020-21 school year as presented. So moved. Second. Second. Motion made by Mrs. Lang, seconded by Mrs. Stiglitz. Mrs. Simpkins. Thank you, Mrs. Cope. For our computer technicians, we are asking for a small amount of FTE to increase the number of workdays for one position so that the calendar will be equal to all other uh, computer technicians. The additional workdays will increase the salary for this position of approximately $8,364 at the minimum uh, starting salary. And this will allow this technician to be able to work the same calendar as well as support two different buildings. In addition, we are asking for uh, additional FTE to increase our transportation staff by five drivers and five monitors. And this staff will provide transportation to students who attend the Center of Autism, and we will no longer utilize EMT, our contracted service, to do that work. While we are anticipating the need for these 10 positions, we will fill them um, as, as needed. So it's not that we will fill all five drivers and all five monitors right away, but we will be judicious in using the FTE uh, depending on our needs. And the change to in-house transportation will be a net savings of about $51,000 moving that from away from the contracted service. Thank you. Ms. Simpkins, is there any problems with the EMT contract? Is it is it renewable or are we at the end of a contract period? Is there any challenges there? 
I think it's just safer for our students um, and we provide better service when we bring those transportation um, services in house. And I think our goal overall is to be able to provide those services to all of our students, regardless of their situation. So as we as we move forward with transportation, you'll see us trying to do some of these things more regularly. Thank you. Ms. Stiglitch. So is EMT, is this just for the Center of Autism or is this for all EMT? We're still going to be using EMT for some of our transportation services. Correct. Is that correct? Or are we just, okay. That's what, and so this is just for the Center of Autism. Ms. Cope, Ms. Ms. Cope Mr. Supple would like to speak. Mr. Supple. Thank you, Mrs. Cope. Uh, uh, so for Mrs. Stiglitz's question, yes, we'll continue to use EMT, uh, but in addition to the Center for Autism, there are students who also attend Applied Behavior Specialists, which is another specialty program. So it's those two programs that will be serviced uh, by the additional staffing that's being recommended this evening. And as a follow-up to Mrs. Cope's earlier question, we will be bringing a recommendation to um, extend a contract with EMT for an additional year. That will give us an opportunity to evaluate the changes that hopefully will be approved this evening between the staffing and the purchase of buses so that when we go out for rebid, we'll have a more complete scope of services that we're gonna request. We don't wanna request a scope of services based on our current level and find that we're able to reduce the amount of services that we need. So we're going to use the coming year to better study what we need and we'll bring a full uh, rebid uh, to the board sometime in the 2021 school year, but there likely will be a renewal or extension of the contract with EMT for the 2021 school year. So we'll, we'll, we'll have a new contract for 2021 and beyond, just extend it for next year. Great, thank you, Mr. Supple. Mrs. Stiglitz, did that answer your question as well? Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Supple. Thank you. Board, any other questions, comments, concerns? All right. All of those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Board, I'll entertain a motion to approve the purchases over $7,500. So moved. Second. Motion made by Mrs. Walker, second by Mrs. Lang. Mr. Supple. Thank you, Mrs. Cope. Uh, I will have a more complete conversation with the board uh, as we get to item C, the monthly financial report. But uh, as an introduction, I just wanted to share that uh, we are being very judicious about what purchases are being approved as we move forward, um, anticipating that there may be some challenges that we'll face in the uh, next fiscal year. And so the items that are brought tonight uh, are just the ones that we feel are essential. There were several purchases that had been requested that have been uh, postponed and were not brought forward tonight. So again, I'll share some more information uh, when we get to item C, but I just wanted to provide that as some background uh, before voting on these items tonight. And I'll be happy to answer any other questions. Board, any questions regarding the purchases over $2,500? Mrs. Walker. Ms. Walker has a question. Okay, uh, bear with me a second. Um, I think it was, was it number one uh, with the fuel, purchasing fuel for the rest of the school year? Uh, do, do we have buses running? I was just kind of curious about that. Sure. Uh, the necessity for this purchase order is to uh, have authority to pay bills for fuel that essentially we've already purchased. So we use a blanket purchase order and they had estimated how much we were going to use and that that purchase order that had been previously approved uh, was all used up. So this is 
what's remaining in this fiscal year, some of which has already been purchased. And we are using a small number of buses to assist with the food distribution program. So drivers are uh, running some very limited routes to deliver food to some families who are not able to come to our pickup sites. So there's a small amount of fuel being used, but really this is to get another purchase order to handle the bills that we anticipate will come in uh, for services that have already been provided. Thank you, Mr. Supple. Uh, board, any other questions? All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, next on our agenda is the projected tax liability notice. Mr. Supple? Uh, thank you, Ms. Cope. Uh, this is an information item that we bring to the board each year. Uh, we're required by statute to provide this information. Uh, it was actually due to the county registrar by April the 8th, and so I had uh, informed the board at our last meeting that this uh, would be submitted prior to our <coughs> meeting, and so that information was submitted. Uh, 2020 calendar year is a non-reassessment year, so there's very little change in assessed valuation, which is reflected in uh, a a statistically insignificant change in our projected rate. And just a reminder that this is just a projected rate based on the information that was available in uh, March. And our actual tax rate for the year will be set in September when we have the after board of equalization assessed valuation numbers from the county assessor. <laughs> muted myself to listen, I apologize. Uh, board, any questions for Mr. Supple? No. All right, thank you, Mr. Supple. And I know there is a full briefing paper attached, so I appreciate that information. Ms. Cope, could we ask that all board members mute unless they're speaking, please? Thank you. All right. Board, next on our agenda, I will entertain a motion to approve the February and March 2020 financial reports as presented. So moved. So moved. Motion made by Mrs. Stiglitz, seconded by Mrs. Lang. Mr. Supple. Oh, Mr. Supple? There you yes, go. thank you, Mrs. Cope. Uh, so uh, yes, we had an early board meeting in March, and so I was not able to provide the February financial statements at that time. So uh, this month is both February and March financial statements. And uh, through the end of March, of course, that covers uh, the first nine months of our fiscal year. So we're three quarters of the way through. I just wanted to provide a more detailed um, information to the board this evening. Uh, because of the unique uh, circumstances uh, we find ourselves in um, with uh, COVID and our response to it. And, and so I appreciate the board's uh, indulgence as I share some additional information. I had an opportunity to participate in a uh, webinar with colleagues of mine from across the state in which we talked about a number of the financial issues that we anticipate uh, we will be facing. Uh, the good news is, is that the revenue picture looks pretty good for this fiscal year with some caveats that I'll share with you as we go forward. One of those is uh, sales tax revenue. So Proposition C sales tax revenue is one of our three major revenue sources. We collect a little over $16 million or have budgeted a little over $16 million. 
And uh, to date, those uh, revenue collections have been tracking uh, very well uh, relative to our budget. However, the uh, information that we have from the state of Missouri is only, the last information I saw was current only through the end of February. And so that does not take into account the uh, impact of uh, closures of restaurants and malls and uh, various uh, service uh, organizations. Um, and, and so I do anticipate that we'll see a decline in the collection of sales tax revenue. And because sales tax revenue is a straight distribution on a per pupil basis of what has been collected, to the extent that collections decline, it's unlikely that our uh, sales tax uh, revenue will meet budget this year. So I'm anticipating uh, that we'll see a downturn of some kind in that. And it is possible given um, uh, the length of the closure uh, and uh, what happens as we uh, begin to open back up as an economy here in Missouri, uh, what the impact that will be. Uh, but I imagine there will be some impact next budget year as well. We did receive our state assessed utilities revenue in February. Uh, we collected only about 92% of our budget. So again, this is not a huge line item for us, but uh, we are close enough that any standard revenue source that tends not to match our prior year amounts is of concern. And so a, a number of our county revenue sources are not keeping uh, up with prior year collections. And so that does uh, pose some concern as we move forward. Uh, as I took a look at state revenue, there's a large gap between this year and last year, but most of that is due to the fact that the state has not distributed any of our early childhood special education revenue as a state revenue source this year. So early childhood special ed is funded 100% uh, based on a combination of state and federal dollars and the state and federal mix varies year to year depending upon um, the decisions made at uh, the state level. And so we budget uh, in both state and federal and we haven't received any state revenue yet. So the um, percentage received appears to be a little off, but I don't have concern particularly uh, for two reasons. One, uh, the supplemental appropriation that was recently approved by the General Assembly included uh, additional funding for early childhood special ed. So I feel very comfortable uh, that we're gonna meet our target this year. Uh, also, uh, we have received uh, funding in our federal sources for early childhood special ed. Uh, so I, I think that we'll meet our target relative to what our budget was. Of course, most of our uh, state revenue is, comes from our basic state aid formula. In February, we did achieve the full funding state adequacy target amount of $6,375. And again, the supplemental appropriation included some additional funding for the formula. So I feel comfortable that for the, the fiscal year 20, uh, we should come very close to collecting uh, what we had budgeted in terms of our state aid. Uh, one area that could be impacted potentially has to do with the classroom trust fund. So the classroom trust fund is a specific breakout to illustrate what proportion of our basic state aid formula comes to us as a result about um, uh, casino gaming or uh, uh, you know, casino gaming. And so cas casinos have been closed and when they might reopen and the extent to which they might be um, uh, returned to their normal levels of operation. Um, remains to be uh, determined as we move forward. Uh, so there could be some um, loss of revenue in the classroom trust fund. I'm hopeful that other state revenues will fill that gap uh, and that we'll receive our full funding of the 6375, uh, but that is something that I will be keeping an eye on uh, as we move forward. On the expenditure side, of course, salaries and benefits are the largest portion of our expenditures. 
Uh, the district has committed to paying its staff, both our certified and non-certified staff, uh, through the end of their work calendar or their contract for fiscal year 20. So our expenditures in these areas will continue through the end of the fiscal year. Uh, that's also true for our extra duty expenditures. Uh, we committed to honoring those extra duty contracts. So even though there are some spring sports that have been canceled, the individuals who had committed to coaching those events, uh, we will continue to pay their extra duty contracts. Some areas where we have an opportunity to save some money this year, uh, overtime is the first one. Uh, we're not in session, and so there's a little opportunity for us to uh, need to work any overtime, so I don't expect to see uh, much, if any, additional expense for the remainder of the fiscal year. Uh, similarly, with sick leave, um, we are all working from home, and while it's uh, not uh, out of the question that some of us might become ill, uh, the likelihood of needing a substitute, which is what is really reflected there, is, is pretty small. So I'm not uh, uh, thinking that we'll see a lot of uh, additional expense there. I did note in my memo that non-certified retirement, uh, we didn't do a good job of uh, accurately capturing all of the retirement eligible non-certified employees. I think that, that has to do with assumptions we made about the number of our bus drivers who would be full-time uh, and eligible for retirement. And, and a larger number are working the hours necessary to be eligible for retirement. So I think that's the main factor contributing to that differential. And uh, I hope to see that you know, we'll do a better job uh, of that in the fiscal year 21 budget. Our medical insurance expenditures have been uh, a little bit higher this year than what I had expected to see. Uh, a possible good news in the short term is that because people are uh, staying at home, uh, we may see a decline in the short term in terms of uh, what is reflected in our actual medical claims experience. Uh, but uh, eventually, those costs will be reflected as people have an opportunity to uh, see their physicians. Unemployment claims is typically an area where we have little expense. We have fielded a number of uh, unemployment claims, uh, much larger than what we've ever seen. I don't know yet whether that'll have a big impact on our budget. We are self-funded for unemployment claims, so we do not uh, uh, participate in an insurance for that. We are self-funded for those. Uh, we do provide uh, instructional services for students who require specialized services that we're not able to deliver. And those students who are eligible for those services will continue to receive them through the end of the school calendar. And so we'll continue to see some expense there. I did note and just wanted to share with the board that while we had anticipated uh, beginning the second round of our agreed upon procedures audit work, uh, we're putting that on hold. A major focus was going to be on taking a look at cash receipts, particularly at sporting events. And because we are not hosting any sporting events this spring, um, it made sense to wait and we'll resume that uh, in the fall. We did receive our invoice for the election uh, that was originally to be held in April, now uh, to be held on June the 2nd. Uh, we were notified that uh, an invoice uh, mis uh, miscalculation was made when the invoices were generated. So the expenses reflected in the financial statements is likely to increase uh, once the election authority has an opportunity to uh, take a look at the actual costs of the election and proportion those out uh, based on the number of items that are on the ballot. Another area where we have an opportunity to save some money is in our trash removal. Because our schools are closed, we have suspended trash collection at most of our sites. However, uh, this is not necessarily a new issue, uh, but we have noted that community members do come by and uh, place trash in our dumpsters. And so we have had to resume on a limited basis a trash collection at some of our sites because of uh, trash that's coming to our facilities from off campus. Uh, as noted earlier in the discussion about EMT and the additional staffing that was requested to transition some routes from EMT to in-house, uh, 
we have spent about a million dollars, a little over $900,000 this year on contracted pupil transportation. We do hope to see that decrease in the future as we're able to transition more of those routes to in-house. Another opportunity for saving money is with travel expenditures. Uh, many conferences have been canceled, even some of those that uh, go into the summer or fall. And so we may see uh, some savings, at least in the short term, um, in, in terms of travel. And we are also going to be beginning the fiscal year uh, with some restrictions on travel as an opportunity to uh, conserve resources. Security services, likewise, at our school buildings, those have been suspended due to our school closures. Uh, most of those security guards provide services during the school day. Uh, no need to continue those uh, when we don't have school in session. Uh, general supplies, uh, I will uh, tell the board that I did ask that uh, all requests uh, for uh, expenditures now to the end of the fiscal year be approved by me before they are moved forward. So we are trying to, again, uh, conserve our expenditures. I am looking towards those items that are uh, necessary for the startup of school next fall or important for the alternative methods of instruction that we're currently delivering. And so there are some of those that fall into that category. But we are trying to uh, put all, uh, Put the brakes on, if you will, for some of our expenditures, particularly uh, in the general supplies area. In addition to the ability to conserve some of our resources, we do have an issue with the delivery of and storage of materials. Because our buildings are not open and able to receive deliveries, we have to have those brought to a central location. And we simply don't have enough space to store all of the things that might typically be ordered. And so we are pausing on some of those orders so as not overburden uh, uh, the limited space that we have for receiving those items. Uh, uh, similarly with uh, our uh, uh, utility expenditures, both electricity and natural gas, uh, since our schools have been out of session, we do have our buildings put back into setback mode, uh, reducing what we will spend uh, on either heating or cooling those buildings. So I anticipate that we'll see a positive benefit in future financial statements as a result uh, of that. Uh, we have, uh, although we did approve an additional uh, purchase uh, order to kind of finish out the year, we will see a significant decrease in what we had budgeted for uh, gasoline and diesel for this fiscal year. Uh, because we're not operating our full fleet of buses uh, during the year. And then finally, I just want to make note of uh, the, our tuition-based programs, both our preschool and our early childhood programs. Those funds together had been on track to produce a surplus of revenue over expense. However, those programs are not able to operate because of COVID-19 closures. And so we're not collecting any, reven any additional revenue this year. We do have expenditures associated with the staff for those programs. And we are also issuing refunds to families who paid in advance for services. So uh, I don't anticipate that we will make our target of generating uh, a surplus of revenue over expense uh, for those reasons. So uh, as a general note, we are studying very closely what's happening at the state level. That a, is a constantly evolving situation. I did participate, as I said, in the webinar with my colleagues from across the state. We anticipate that the governor will request a special session and have the budget approved in June, rather than the second Friday in May, which is uh, our, our typical approval process. So we will be most likely approving, certainly developing, but most likely approving our budget before the state of Missouri has approved its budget. Uh, there are some unknowns. Uh, what will happen with the federal money that's coming to us as a result of the CARES Act and any uh, subsequent initiatives at the federal level to provide some relief to the states? Uh, we have some idea of that. Um, I think at this point, we intend to take a very conservative approach to the fiscal year 21 budget. 
Uh, there will be some areas like sales tax or basic state aid where we will build in um, some reductions. Uh, although I was encouraged that based on the conversation this week, those reductions may not need to be as big as what I had initially anticipated. Uh, so again, I appreciate your patience this evening. I know that's a little longer than I usually talk, uh, but it's a set of unusual circumstances and I felt it would be a great opportunity to provide some information to the board. We did ask uh, people within the district to re-examine their budgets and to take a look at areas where they could make reductions. I ask that those be completed by the end of this week. Uh, I will be working very closely with Dr. Hendricks Harris and Dr. Hoven, uh, but there is a possibility that the budget work session that we typically conduct at our May meeting, we may need to conduct that at our June meeting in conjunction with the first reading. Um, it, just to give us time to further adjust to the constantly evolving news we have uh, about revenue, uh, particularly at the state level, and, and to give us some time to incorporate the additional changes that we're asking people to make at a fairly late date uh, in terms of their uh, budgets. Great, thank you, um, Mr. Supple. Um, you know, our world is changing every day right now. So um, thank you for keeping a close eye on it and giving us that update. Um, we are gonna have some challenges coming forward financially. Um, so we need to think critically on how we can uh, minimize that impact to our students. So thank you for keeping a close eye on it. Board, do you have any questions, comments? Uh, for Mr. Supple. Ms. Stiglitch. I'm sorry, I have one. Mr. Supple, you mentioned unemployment, that we were we had gotten some requests for unemployment. If we're paying our employees through the end of the year, who would be who would be asking for unemployment? I guess I'm confused. I will ask Mrs. Simpkins to help me out. Uh, the Human Resources Department receives those requests. Okay. And so uh, I'll, I'll, I'll let Mrs. Simpkins respond. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Mrs. Diglich, when when an, an individual applies for unemployment, there is a period of time that the state will go back and ask for different employers to share in some of that cost or to respond to that. So we may have been a prior employer to someone who might be claiming unemployment, and we may have um, some costs associated with that. Um, some of our um, our substitute teachers may be claiming unemployment as, as work is not available to them. And so we're just responding to those claims as they come forward and providing information um, to the state. And then the state will determine if they're eligible to receive those benefits based on their policies. Okay, thank you so much. Any other questions, comments, concerns? Okay, board, we have a motion on the table to approve the February and March 2020 financial reports as presented. We had a motion by Mrs. Stiglitz and a seconded by Mrs. Lang. All of those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you again, Mr. Supple. Board next on our agenda is uh, I would entertain a motion to approve the meal and a la carte prices for the 2020 and 2021 school year as presented. So moved. Second. Motion made by Mrs. Walker, seconded by Mr. Lane. Mr. Supple, anything to add? No, thank you, Mrs. Cope. Board, any questions, comments, concerns? Mr. Lang? Oh, you're on, you're on mute, Chad. Oh, got it. There you go. I know I say something every, I know I say something about this every year, but it feels like to me that we just get nickel and dime to death with this, these 10 cent increases every single year. So just let it be known. All right, board, any other questions, comments? Mrs. Walker. Do I remember from previous years that we have to have an increase? Is that, that that's what I, I remember from previous years. It wasn't an option, if I remember. Yeah. 
Yes, uh, Mrs. Walker, the, the, because we're participating in the federal meal program, uh, we need to have our full priced meals, uh, maintain a certain parity with the uh, um, reimbursement that we receive for our free meals. And so every year we have to do that calculation. Uh, we're still not completely on parity, but we are able to only raise our meal prices by a, a, a max, we can, we can do a maximum of 10 cents a year. So we've, or, or minimum, I guess. We've, we've chosen to do the minimum, so we're getting towards parity at a much slower pace because the federal reimbursement rate for free lunches continues to increase. And so it's kind of a constantly moving target. So it's likely that we will continue to see increases in our uh, uh, meal prices just because we're continually trying to shoot for that uh, parity. Mr. Lang? Have we looked at opting out of the federal program like Wentzville? I had some conversation with uh, colleagues uh, and my understanding, and I, I don't wish to, you know, it's not, I'm not into the business, but I will say that their uh, experience was uh, not favorable and they're looking uh, to uh, find ways to reverse uh, maybe a decision that was made previously. We receive a substantial amount of support for our uh, food program from the federal government. And I don't think we would be able to make that up just through sales, which was the predicating basis for the decision at Wentzville, uh, as I understand it. And I don't believe that that's worked out as they thought it might. Great, thank you. Board, any other questions, comments, concerns? All of those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Motion carries 6 1. <sighs> Board, I'll entertain a motion to approve entering into an agreement with J.W. Terrell to provide benefit consulting and broker services for the district's insurance programs for a total fee of $207,000 for the three-year agreement. Moved. Mr. Lang? So moved. Second. Motion made by Mr. Lang, seconded by Mrs. Lang. Mr. Supple. Thank you, Mrs. Cope. Uh, I did uh, email the board earlier today uh, to notify you of a change in my recommendation. Um, we were able to negotiate a uh, better price with our current uh, broker. And I believe that the services uh, that they offer, have, I, I know the services they offer have been excellent, uh, but more to the point, I think there are some synergies that are gained uh, as a result of continuing to work with GW Terrell. Uh, they represent 13 Missouri school districts. We have a unique uh, business model, if you will, and understanding uh, school districts, I think is an important piece of that. And there will be some opportunities just as we partnered with Parkway and Pattonville on a clinic, there may be opportunities that Taro can introduce us to for further synergies between school districts uh, as we move forward. So, um, uh, I was very happy that uh, they were forthcoming with a revised proposal uh, that made it financially uh, possible for me to make this recommendation tonight. Board, any other questions, comments, concerns? All right, by roll call. Oh, no, sorry, all of those in favor. <laughs> Aye. 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 Any of Aye. Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Supple. All right, Dr. Hendricks Harris, I'll turn it over to you. Yeah, let me just start with how much things have changed since the last time we've seen each other. I'm going to go ahead and start with celebrations like I typically do. Uh, we have two Francis House School District students who took home some impressive awards at the Missouri Tri County Regional Science and Engineering Fair competition on March 7th. 
Vinay Kanduru, a sixth grader at Bryan Middle, received first place in the Applied Science Consumer category. Reva Mehta, a second grader at Cosley Elementary, placed second in physical science category. Congratulations to them both. On February 28th, high school students from across the district attended the annual Construction Industry Trades Expo hosted by the Larry Elms Carpenter Training Center and sponsored by the Carpenters Joint Apprenticeship Program. The goal of the expo is to provide high school juniors and seniors with an opportunity to learn more about the various trade industries and how they can pursue a career in construction. Um, now just a few updates. Um, we know that for our families, especially those who are working from home and have multiple students, that this online learning experience that we're providing has been a challenge. Uh, just a few things I want to note. One, we have an instructional web page that you can find on the district website. Uh, there you can, all of our families can access instructional resources. Um, after delivering 75% uh, of our school year in a traditional setting, our content leaders and teachers are working very hard to provide meaningful experiences for students. A uh, couple of updates in that regard. Also, uh, because of the feedback we're receiving, we will be moving to a four-day instructional week, so students will get direct instruction on four days. Uh, they'll still have access to their teacher on the other day, uh, but we won't be providing direct instruction because of the feedback that we've gotten. Uh, we also learned this week that we will not be required to make up the snow days, so our last day with students will now be March 19th, and we'll be getting that information out um, to our staff and family soon. Uh, May 19th. May 19th. You said Did March. I say June? No, you, you said, said March. March. Oh, it was kind of March 19th when we shut down, but. <laughs> <laughs> so it's May 19th? May 19th, yes. Thank you. Um, in response to the pandemic, Governor Parson has signed an executive order moving our municipal election to June 2nd. So Proposition S and our board candidate election will both be on that date. We're working with the election authority to provide space and traffic patterns that will increase distance and provide other precautions for our voters. Um, the academic team is also working on a limited virtual summer school. We'll have a more definitive plan within the next two weeks. Likely, we're looking at summer mediation for struggling students at the elementary and middle school levels, some credit recovery, and a limited number of credit advancement at the high school, and none of those will be face-to-face. Uh, another question we have received a lot of is in regards to graduation. At this time, we are hoping to have a celebration for our seniors in July. Um, it's something that we value. We believe it's very important. So we are going to make every attempt to celebrate them to the extent possible. Um, but we know that may, may or may not be possible. So we will also be working on a virtual ceremony um, should our plans not work out in July. Uh, we're also working through logistics for material pickup. Um, we're working with the health department to determine when this will be possible. So as you can imagine, our staff and our students and our families are anxious to pick up their things. We know this will not happen prior to March, to May 1st, not March 1st, May 1st, um, and likely now not until mid-May. Um, we'll do that in small groups and over the course of days to keep the, the number of people limited. In addition to working through the logistics with many unknown factors, we still have some celebrations throughout all of this. Um, as you know, our industrial technology teachers from across the district are using our 3D printers to help fight the spread of COVID-19. Around the country, shortages of face masks, disposable gloves, and other medical supplies have been reported. To help provide for our healthcare workers on the front lines of the pandemic, Ricky Reeves from Francis Hall High School, Michael Green from Francis Hall North, and Don Barnes from Francis Hall Senior Central are using technology in their classrooms to make a difference. Another celebration and a collaborative effort between Francis Hall and Sodexo, we've raised approximately $40,000 in donations and collected four pallets of food to support our families in need during the school closure. In addition to individuals, several organizations have donated to support the effort, including Tri-County Labor, Cottable Firefighters Outreach, and Kids Against Hunger. To date, we've served over 18,000 meals. We continue to hear many heartwarming stories of our families and our staff supporting our community. Our teachers are working diligently, not only on providing instruction, but making connections and supporting the mental health needs of our students. Francis Hall has always come together in crisis, and this is especially true now. We have an amazing community. That's it. Thank you, Dr. Hendrick Saris. Uh, tough time, but some, some right to celebrate on a few items. Thank you for sharing that.
Yep. Board next on our agenda is Board of Education comments. Mrs. Lang. Hi, everyone. Um, I first want to start off by saying, echoing kind of what Dr. Hendricks Harris just said, we are, the Francis Health School District is amazing. I have never been, I've always been proud to be part of it, but this has been, I, I'm, I'm extremely proud. Thing that, um, we know student voice is important, parent voice, community voice is just so important and everyone is at their own homes. So I wanted to reach out to the board and see if anyone, you know, get their thoughts on possibly sending out a survey or somehow reaching out to our people to see what we are doing right, what is going right. Um, we know there's things going wrong or not ideal or just, just wanted to check in with the board and get your thoughts on doing something along those lines from the district. board any comments mr lang i just wanted to say if uh one thing with this pandemic has shown it shows how much more we as francis how need to work towards uh the one-to-one -one technology um i know it's financially you know whenever financially possible but i think that's something more we need to shoot towards with a lot of families having to share devices and stuff like this it's it's i think you know whenever we're possibly able to move to the one-on-one -on -one device it'll be that much more easy if we ever have to face something like this again. Mr. Hayes. Yeah, I, I, I agree with Mary Lang about the fact that it, it's good to get some input from people. Everybody's on their computer or there's some type of social media and, you know, we're doing a lot of things well, but there's probably a few things out there that we're not doing so well and getting, both sides of the issues that will just help us strong, make us stronger and better in the long run. So I, I agree with there some way or another, we should be able to uh, be able to survey or, or get a pulse on the, on, you know, on the community. Thank you, Mr. Hain. Mrs. Walker. This is awkward. We don't normally have conversation during board comments, but um, I agree. And I think, I wonder if it's something that we could use thought exchange for. I don't know if there's a question out there right now, or if this is something that, you know, let our community have an opportunity to talk about it because I mean, it's consuming at this moment. <clears throat> yeah, it would not be my recommendation to do that via thought exchange. I think that we can send a survey out and it would meet our needs. Uh, we know this is a challenging time for our families. We also know we have uh, an election coming up in June and we can listen to the negative feedback, but I'm not sure that uh, we, we necessarily need it to be posted on our page. So, so I think what I'm hearing from the board is that it's important that we want to hear from our families. We know this is the first time out of the gate, but we want to hear um, potentially uh, some things that are going well or things that we can fix or some of the things that might we we as a team may not know are a challenge but are an easy fix uh, to implement because we only have school for another month now um, and it, it I'm hopeful that we don't go to into this type of environment again um, so it sounds like it's the temperature of the board that we're going to ask administration to consider how do we receive that feedback from our families certainly can work on um, something and I think what you're hinting at is that we could be in and out in the future as well so seeking some feedback as we move forward um, could be helpful so we certainly can work on that I will also add to Michelle's point about using thought exchange that uh, prior to the election we will be asking a question about what projects people are most excited about um, so that we can bring the focus back to to the bond issue just prior to to the election Mrs. Stiglitz um, I would just like to say to this amazing academic team and superintendent and deputy superintendent, assistant superintendent, and Mr. Supple and Mr. Dykeman and Ms. Simpkins, the last four weeks have been challenging, to say the least, for all of us. And as a medical person, I've seen how this, this 
world has changed in just four weeks time. I could not be more prouder of the, you guys and what you have done for our kids, for our families, for us as board members and for our teachers. Every one of you needs to, to me, you're my unsung heroes. And I just want you all to know that. We appreciate that. We do have a very strong team in our district. And, and I, given the circumstances, I think things are going as well as could be expected. Everybody is certainly give, giving all their effort into making things go well. But you guys also need to know that you're doing an amazing job. There is going to always be something, but for you guys need to know that you're doing an amazing job. And I challenge anyone to do something better. So I want you, every one of you to know how much you are appreciated. Thank you, Ms. Stiglitch. Any other board comments this evening? Mr. Hain. Yeah, I just want to point out that we actually have 35 people attending this meeting, so everybody must be running out of stuff to watch on TV. So I want to thank them for participating with us tonight. And when we get back to the real meetings, they're welcome to show up at the boardroom and participate in person. Absolutely. All right. Looks like we're good on board comments. Thank you all very much. Um, board, let's take a look at our upcoming meetings. Um, so our May 21st meeting, is there any adjustments? Uh, Mr. Supple, I think we do see in here that the budget work session is tentative based on the comments that you made earlier. Is I would recommend we just go ahead and move that to June, do our first read and our work session simultaneously at the June meeting. Okay, that sounds good. Any other additions, corrections? Um, I have a request that we, as we continue to meet in this virtual world, that we keep our agendas to a minimum. Um, I really like to facilitate conversation face-to-face, -face, uh, and I think our board's very successful at that. And although we're, we're using some amazing technology, it does make it challenging. Laura, I can't see what we have on the agenda for the June 4th meeting, um, but do we have reorg on there? Because that's when that will occur, correct? Correct. The June 4th uh, reorganization will happen at that time. It's state statute that we have to do it within 14 days of the election, and our um, third Thursday of June is not um, is after that 14-day timeline. So if we successfully launch an election for new board members, we would organize at that time. And I myself have my fingers crossed. I can tell you we're walking buildings with the election authority next week in preparation for the June uh, election. Excellent. Um, on that June 4th meeting, we do have the induction of the new board members. We have the MSBA delegates as well. Um, we have the biannual approval of the financial disclosure policy, state and federal programs annual report, 2020-2021 assessment plan, and the first reading and workshop on the budget. Is that good? Any changes or additions, corrections on that meeting at this time? All right. Thank you. Um, board, next on our agenda is information. So there were a variety of subjects listed in the information section this month. So please make sure you take a look at those. Uh, was there any questions at this time? Okay. So with that, board, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn to, to closed session. So moved. Second. Motion made by Mrs. Walker, seconded by Mr. Lane. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you all for joining us this evening. Bye. Bye. Bye.